gravity can turn a normal looking game into something that really looks quite good. One of the things that people tend to notice is real world situations. So if you have an object moving downwards and you just move it by a constant amount every moment, it's not going to look as realistic to somebody, even if they intrinsically don't understand how gravity works. However, if you've got an object that moves under the force of gravity, you tend to get a much more realistic look to your game. Now, this is quite a departure from the normal method of getting things to work, because you're no longer dealing with moving an object by a fixed amount. So in other words, when you press a button, something moves. Instead, you're going to be setting a speed for an object. You're going to be giving it a force, and it's going to have a resultant speed. Okay. Now, this seems quite weird, but if we look at what's roughly going on in these sort of things, if I grab my pencil, normally what would happen is if you have a little object on the screen like this, is when you press a button, it would move by a certain amount. Okay, and that might, might be speed. And you press your button and it moves. And then you let go of your button and it stops. What we're going to do is we're going to change that. We're going to say whenever you press this button, you're going to give it a bit of acceleration. And the object itself is then going to move under that acceleration. So if you were to press another button in the other direction, you'd give it acceleration in the other direction. But what would happen is the object would be moving it would slow down and then it would start going back the other way. And it gives a much more effective look to your game. And because gravity is also an acceleration, we can just use that at the same time. So let's go into a completely blank project and start this whole thing from scratch so that we can see what we can do in these sort of situations. OK, so I'll just get rid of all this stuff off the screen. I shall reboot Pico 8. And we can start programming. OK, so the first thing we're obviously going to need is an X and a Y. So let's put something right in the middle of the screen. OK, now the first departure from what we would normally do is that instead of leaving it at that or maybe giving a speed, we're going to have another set of variables DX, which is the um, I'll tell you what, let's call it VX, which is the velocity in the X direction, which at the moment is zero and VY, which is the velocity in the Y direction, which let's say we'll also say is zero. Now, in this particular game, we're also going to have some gravity, and I'm going to set it to 0 0.01. All right. Now, you can test um, the value of g in whatever way you might want and see what happens. So let's have our usual, a function update and a function draw. OK, so we're going to put these in, and I'm just going to deal with it. So I'm going to draw a rectangle around the screen. OK, so we've got a nice border to the screen. All right, and I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm just going to do circle fill, and I'm going to draw it at X and Y with a radius of, say, 4 and a color of red. So we've got a nice red circle. So if I run this, there it is. OK, I've forgotten to clear the screen, haven't I? So I will clear the screen, and we'll run it again. There it is. OK, and at the moment, nothing happening. So in function update, we're going to put a few things into place. OK, the first of it, let's have a little comment, is some gravity. Now, gravity works by altering the vertical speed. So really, all that happens is that every turn, Vy is going to increase by gravity. And that's it. If I now run it, you'll see nothing happens. Why has nothing happened? Well, because we haven't actually moved the object. All right, so to move the object, and at the moment we're only dealing with the y direction, the y value is going to be altered by the velocity in the y direction. So if we now run it, there's the object, and it gets quicker and quicker and quicker. Now, we might think to ourselves that value of g is a bit small, so we could go up and, let's say, make it 0 0.05. OK, that looks better. If I start it at the top of the screen, up here, let's say 3. Wow, gravity. So that's a really, really, really simple way of implementing gravity into your games. OK, it's very, very straightforward. But what we'll do on this particular video is, is look at how we can use these forces to give ourselves a little bit of interesting movement. OK, so in order to stop things plumbing off the screen at the moment, I'm just going to set the gravity to zero. So you can see now when we run it, 
nothing happens because I just briefly want to have a look at um, user input. So let's go in here for our button naught. Okay. So if we alter button naught, what we're going to do is we're going to change VX by a very small amount. Okay, 0 0.01, let's say. So we've altered VX, and then that means down in here, the X value is going to be altered by VX as well. Okay, I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to do the same for VY, oh, sorry, for um, moving in the right direction, but this time obviously we're going to be adding 0 0.01. And I'm just going to move my object back towards the middle of the screen so you can see what's going on. And if I run it now, I can move that way. And now it's drifting. Now I'm pressing my button and it goes back the other way. I'm not pressing any buttons. Now I'm pressing the left button and so on like that. OK, so I've got what's a little bit of inertia as well. OK, so my object moves left and right. What I'm going to do now is just take these two values, okay, and I'm going to put them also into the y direction. So vy and vy, and this is for button, where's my cursor? There is for button two and button three. Okay, so we get the same sort of things happening. Now that's not particularly large, so let's make it maybe 0.2, like that. So now I can move that way. I can move to the right, I can move up, down. And so I have a little bit more of a sort of realistic inertia-based movement on things. Okay, now I've gone off the top of the screen there. Now because we've got movement based on speed rather than direct movement, we can also implement a bounce, which can be quite nice. So what we can say is this, if x is less than naught, in other words, if it's moved off the left-hand side of the screen, what we can do is we can change the value of vx. So we can say vx equals minus vx, end. OK, and I'm going to copy this row of code. And I'm going to put some in for the other directions as well. So what I'm doing is I'm reversing the value of the x direction. And the same over here. If x is greater than 127, so in other words, if I try to go off the right-hand side of the screen, we do it again. And we can say the same for y. In these two directions okay 127 like that now one interesting thing here is because all I'm doing is inverting it these have to be Y's because all I'm doing is inverting it actually I don't have to have two lines of code for these I could say if X is less than naught or X is greater than 127 and so I could have it on one single line of code and the same here if y is less than 0 or y is greater than 127, I can do the same there. So now I should be able to get some sort of bouncing going. So I move to the edge, I let go, bounce. I can go upwards, and now I can start to get a bit of bouncing. I'm not touching any keys at the moment. This is now moving entirely of its own free will. Well, it's not free will, of course. I've um, push the buttons to make it move in this direction. I'm going to give it a bit more downward velocity. OK, so the thing's moving with more downward velocity. There we go, look at that, much faster. OK, so this thing's moving really quite rapidly now and we've got some nice realistic bouncing going off the edges of the screen. Now, at the moment it's going to move forever, but we could introduce some friction or air resistance. So let's give it some air resistance. Now, air resistance works Every, well, in this particular implementation, every single time it goes through the update loop, it's going to slow the object down by a certain percentage. And so in other words, what we need to know is what percentage of speed will still be maintained. So let's say we're going to slow it 99% maintained speed each time. So in other words, we're slowing it by 1%. So I've put this value of 0 0.99, which represents 99%. And so what's going to happen is every turn, the speed is going to be altered slightly. OK, so I can put in here friction and I can say Vy is multiplied by F 
and Vx multiplied by F. And that's going to slow it down. So now if we run it, okay, I've got quite a lot of stuff going on. So you can see it's bouncing, but very slowly it's going to come to a standstill. I haven't pressed any buttons. The object just comes to a standstill because of friction. And obviously you can alter whatever value you want of friction. Okay, so I've got this going quite fast now. That's in fact squashed off the edge of the screen, so we've got a bit of a, a glitch in our in our collision detection because we've gone very basic here. Um, if you've watched an earlier version of Box Hit and collision detection, you'd know you could actually do something a bit more sophisticated here. So that's how friction can be implemented as well. Okay, and so in our instance, I've got gravity, but I've got it set to that. If I like put some gravity in as well, um, I'm going to make the entire speed application faster. Okay. So you can see it bouncing there now under the force of gravity, it's just coming down. So I can try and go up, but it's just going to come down, bounce like that. Okay. And away sideways and maybe up. Now this is really useful. You can do all sorts of things once you've implemented gravity into a game. One rather nice one that you could do if I start the object down towards the bottom at um, a position of say 120, just so it comes to rest pretty well straight away. Um, let's put it at 123. So I'm going to try and implement a jump. That means button 2, which is upwards, and I'm going to give it a value of let's say 2. So I'm going to implement a jump, and you can, whoa, that was too much of a jump. Sorry, that was a rather rapid one. I'm going to change it to a button press. Okay, the difference between BTN and BTNP is that BTNP happens once when you press down the button and then it doesn't happen anymore. If you press BTN, it happens for the whole time you've got the button pressed and that sometimes gives a rather unrealistic um, effect because if you happen to be slightly more ham-fisted when you hit the buttons, you can have something happen 3, 4, 5, 10, 20 times in the time it's taken to press the button. So I'm going to have it happen only once and I'm going to jump. So there's my character jumping. Okay, he's back down on the ground again, like this. So I jump again. There he goes. Now I can do a double jump. In my instance, I've managed to program some sort of triple jump. Okay, so there he is down on the ground in a second. And I'll wait for him to come to the bottom and jump. Okay. Now gravity might not be particularly strong there, so maybe I'd increase my value of gravity. And so you've got a nice jumping character like this. And it's realistic. Okay, You could imagine combining that with a sideways scroller or something like that, and that would give you a very nice, this bit of code here, a very nice bit of jump. All you'd need is your gravity, which you would implement, and you'd implement the moving object part here. So this is really how to bring gravity into your game and also just a little bit on how to make things start to bounce off the edge of walls. You can see how this could start to form the basis of a really simple bat and ball game or anything else that's going to require something to be moving around quite rapidly. For platformers as well, this sort of simple thing where you implement a rather vigorous Y direction movement but also have gravity in place gives you a really simple way of jumping from platform to platform. So there's a really easy way to implement gravity into your games. Happy programming.